Good day. My name is Keith McClanahan, and first I would like to extend a special thanks to FEMI and Alpha Mead for inviting me to speak at your 2014 FM Roundtable Conference. It is a great honor. FEMI and I have been working together to develop this talk so that it covers the areas of, of concern and issues that are related to FM benchmarking and benchmarking applications. First, I'd like to introduce the two principles for FM benchmarking. First is myself. I have 37 years of experience in the facility management business. I've been 18 years with a major utility, and then almost 20 years now, um, 18 years with FM benchmarking, and uh, almost 20 years in the consulting services for benchmarking applications. I'm one of the two principles of FM benchmarking. Peter Kimmel is the other principal for FM benchmarking, and he has um, 23 years as a facilities manager, and he's the expert behind our office automation applications. He's really the, uh, the driver behind the tools that you see in the FM benchmarking that makes the system work and easy to navigate. Well, let me talk about some of the things that make FM benchmarking unique. First, it's the only tool that we're aware of that combines costs, sustainability, and best practices in one module. By that I mean we include costs and we include best practices and when we analyze our costs we can see where the best practices stand in, in relation to those modules. And I'll show you that in a, on, on coming graphs in this slide. Well first the second thing I'd like to add is that FM benchmarking uses real data. You may hear from other benchmarking applications that they have 100,000 buildings in their database or many, many more than, uh, uh, than you would believe possible. And that's true. They, they may not have those, those buildings may not be actual data points. There actually could be derived data. We use actual customer data to produce these reports. All the data in the FM benchmarking system comes from our customers' data entries. Next thing I'd like to do is talk about how FM benchmarking saves you time. While others may have really long and complicated forms to fill out, uh, you have two choices with FM benchmarking. If you want to just see uh, a quick comparison for whether your cost and performance is reasonable, you can use FM benchmarking Lite. Just enter a few numbers into a, uh, a spreadsheet that's online and you can see where uh, the cost would stand on a, on a quartile basis in the FM benchmarking application. If you want to include your building's data and see where you stand and be on the charts, then you would use the full FM benchmarking tool. However, it, you can have most of your data in in as little as 30 minutes. You can input multiple buildings through spreadsheets if you want to. And you can use a customer, uh, uh, what we call a customized interface, to upload your data. Uh, for in, in bulk quantities for the benchmarking application. So um, a building per 30 minutes uh, or uh, multiple buildings via a spreadsheet application. And by multiple buildings I'm generally talking about quantities in, that are greater than 20. Uh, under 20 you can, you can pretty much uh, use the uh, interface on the website. By the way the website requires no software to download. Everything runs through a browser mode it's a very easy and simple tool to use. Here's one of the um, first applications of, from the website that I'd like to show you. It's our annual utility cost chart, uh, not chart, uh, input form. And this is, um, um, in, in the super quick mode, this just requires you to input the electricity costs and the natural gas costs. And because it wouldn't fit on the screen, there's a, a little further down uh, there's a uh, spot to put in the water and sewer costs. Those are the key uh, inputs for determining your facility costs and uh, that's really all that's required to be on, on the uh, uh, FM benchmarking charts uh, after you've input your data. So you can see that's pretty easy to implement. FM benchmarking has filters, whereas others produce generic reports 
which uh, they may ask, you know, is your building an office building? And they'll give you an office building report. Uh, we actually have fil filters that you can show, you can select, and uh, here, for example, are some of the key ones. You can choose size, age, type of function, for example, if it's housing, or if it's manufacturing, or if it's an office building. You can choose your filter by the type. Uh, there are many more. There's actually 50 or more filters in the system. Uh, some are much more valuable in certain applications than others. You can choose your climate zone, for example, and compare your buildings against all the buildings that are in the same climate zone. Um, that would not be a particular use if you're comparing your maintenance costs. But uh, the filters uh, really allow you to get down to uh, as comparable a, of, a, uh, uh, of a peer group as possible when you're comparing your benchmark data. Well, FM benchmarking is dynamic. Many other benchmarking tools, and I'll talk about some of them, uh, have an annual cycle. Uh, for example, you put, you're required to put your data in by the 1st of April, and the report is issued by the 1st of June, and that's the cycle, and if you miss it, um, well, that's just too bad. FM benchmarking is dynamic. Your data is entered into the system, and it's immediately available for comparison with all the other data that's in the system. The only... Um, uh, Disadvantage to that is that uh, others may put in additional data later, but that still doesn't preclude you from going back and comparing your building again with additional data. So all of the graphs, reports, and best practices are up to the minute and current when you run your report. Well, here's an example of one of the reports. In this case, um, we have the O&M cost per square foot. First, I'd like to point out that on this chart, we break the groups up into quadrants. So the part that's uh, to the extreme left here is the first quartile in, in sort of a, a, a light purple. The next quartile is a blue with the, uh, uh, and our building is shown towards the top end of the, of the second quartile in yellow. And if you had multiple buildings that were in this report, uh, you would have um, multiple yellow lines on this chart with the names of your buildings. In all cases, FM benchmarking data does not get, um, your building does not get shown to others. It is, uh, it is only the uh, uh, building data that, your building data is only compared and available to you. Uh, everything else is confidential. The, oh, by the way, the, the dark red line is the median, and the third and fourth quartile are shown in a darker purple and a, and a green. Well, from that, we can develop uh, the O&M best practices analysis. And, and this, co this comes directly from the inputs uh, uh, of the users as to which best practices they have implemented. And in this case, we have um, um, the top, well, we've actually selected from the analysis the, the first eight. There's actually about um, 30 of these. And the first eight are what I just was able to clip off and put onto this, on, onto this slide. And you can see that the first best practice we analyzed was the uh, condition index survey. And we've indicated that we're doing that in our building. And that 79% of the people in our quartile are also doing condition index surveys. And that 91% of the people in the first quartile are doing that. So that that verifies that that's a good practice and that's a good thing to do and we should continue to do that. The next one uh, is something we check no to and we are not doing a contractor selection process in our sample building and 76 percent of the people in our quartile are doing that and 91 percent of the people in the first quartile are doing that. So that, that definitely is something that we should take a careful look at implementing and applying to our uh, uh, our, our facility uh, practices uh, in an, in which would tend to reduce our operating costs. Well, Femi and I talked, as, we, as I indicated earlier, uh, about the topics that you would like to hear about. And one of these is, what are the global benchmarking trends? Well, I'm happy to report to you that benchmarking on almost all areas is up significantly. Uh, we are in ongoing discussions with organizations like uh, BIFM, uh, the British Institute of Facility Managers, the BOMA, 
uh, Building Owners and Managers Association, Cornet Global, IFMA, PRISM, RICS, and many others. Uh, this is uh, associations are looking carefully at the benchmarking tools and applications uh, to see how they would, uh, could be used uh, for their members. Service providers are also looking carefully at benchmarking applications. Uh, AM Facilities, the, the host of this conference, uh, C.B. Richard Ellis, Compass, Cushman and Wakefield, ISS, JLL, Sodexo. These are just a few of the uh, major service providers that are uh, uh, in talks with FM Benchmarking to use their application uh, for their uh, clients. The trend is that the clients, that is the end users of the service, want the service providers to be able to provide benchmarking data that's external and beyond the, the scope of the, of the internal comparisons of the service provider. Then we have verticals. Verticals are uh, large organizations such as education and healthcare, the housing markets, retail, uh, and many others. In particular, um, FM Benchmarking is working with a major healthcare provider right now uh, to include almost 1,400 of their facilities in, in a specific benchmarking application that's related to the Healthcare Cost Containment Act here in the United States. And uh, that, that's added uh, um, significant healthcare modules uh, to the FM benchmarking application that will work for that vertical. And then many, uh, many, other, uh, uh, many of the publications are including articles, white papers, and it's hard to pick up a journal these days that doesn't have an article about benchmarking. A little bit of background on AM facilities and FM benchmarking. Um, we've been partners for about 18 months now. It's been more difficult than either Femi or I expected to get uh, benchmarking started in Nigeria. We've talked a bit about the reasons for that slow start. Uh, possibly that the clients are not aware of the benchmarking tool. Uh, another possible reason is that the benefits have not been made fully aware or that it's not a priority with the day-to-day -day issues. And by that I mean most facility managers are having to deal with, um, oh, how should I say it, the, the emergent issues, uh, the water line break, the power failure, um, the overflowing toilet, um, you name it. I, I know your jobs. I've had, I've had one like it for 18 years and I know that there's a, a series of uh, emergencies that almost happen on a daily basis in, in, a, in a facility portfolio as large as many of you are managing. Uh, but which puts FM benchmarking or any benchmarking application uh, at a lower priority. Uh, so it's, it just gets put off and I think that's part of the part of the problem. Well, let me explain, as Femi and I talked, why Nigerian FM should embrace FM benchmarking to produce some savings. Uh, FM benchmarking is the only tool that shows you how to implement best practices and achieve those savings. In this chart, we're showing the overall cost for utilities, maintenance, and janitorial service uh, over a 10-year period. The savings achieved are significant. It's a 31% savings. And you'll notice that in no year uh, is the savings negative uh, or is there a cost associated with it. Every year that the, the client's benchmarked, they achieve the savings. Uh, now the first few years, obviously the savings are greater because as we say, there's, there's more low-hanging fruit to, uh, to implement. But even in the later years, there's always something that uh, people learn from the benchmarking application that achieves those savings. Another reason a Nigerian FM should embrace benchmarking is that it pays for yourself, itself. It pays for itself. Uh, other benchmarking tools are really not designed to produce savings. They're designed to produce a report and that's it. FM benchmarking is designed to produce a report, show you where you're at, where you stand among your peer group, and then show you what best practices you could or should implement to achieve savings. FM benchmarking costs a lot less than other tools and by implementing just one best practice from the FM benchmarking application 
you can achieve the savings you need to more than pay for your costs and effort at applying these benchmarking applications. Usually you can achieve those savings in, as few as a, in, a, in only a few months. Well, another reason uh, Nigerian service providers should embrace FM benchmarking would be to satisfy their client benchmarking needs. There are many clients that actually require a benchmark comparison uh, in their contract, and, and more and more clients are requesting that to be done. Uh, there's also a need to show some benchmark application uh, with independent data. It's not, probably not sufficient just to show that you're, you're doing okay among the, uh, to your client with the clients that you're serving. But it's nice to show it with independent data to be able to convince the client your costs are reasonable. And then it's useful for you to be able to show that your, your performance is over or under. And by that I mean there may be places in where you're providing a service where you could provide less of a service and save the client some money. And you may need to provide more service in another area. It's just a reallocation of resources. And benchmarking can show you where to do that. And, and show you how to, uh, how to best allocate those resources. And then finally, you can justify your current pricing. By that I mean you may uh, be asked um, uh, at some point to tender or um, bid your, pro your services to another. And if you can show your benchmarking data is reasonable and in, in uh, the first or second quartile of your, of your peer group performance, you may be able to avoid that bid or procurement process and uh, save a lot of effort on both your organization and the client's organization. Well, Femi and I also talked about what we could do, uh, what we should talk about with the uh, green building certification process. I know it's, a, it's an ongoing issue. Uh, there are at least three major green building certification tools out there, and I'll just say a few words about each of those. Uh, Green Globes is, um, is an option that uh, seems to be gaining some initiative. It's apparently a little easier to use and less costly. Um, it's, uh, by that I mean that uh, architects and engineers that are using that are reporting to me that they've been able to obtain a certification at a lower cost than uh, some other applications, and they've been able to achieve it quicker the, and, and with less effort. However, apparently with that less effort, it's also a little uh, less consistent with the full life cycle um, analysis that usually goes with a green building certification. Then there's BREAM, which is a British model. Um, now they, they report on their website that there's 250,000 buildings that have gone through the BREAM process. That's a very large number. If that's accurate, that would make them the largest um, um, green, green building certification process. Um, we, we haven't tried to verify that. We know that it's uh, complex and high in cost and it follows the, the UK uh, kind of culture uh, with, a, um, with a very uh, rigorous analysis attached to it. And then there's LEED. Um, leader, uh, the uh, LEED process, has, they have an excellent uh, PR program. They have a very large database, and they are, but they are undoubtedly are complex and one of the more costly applications in the tool of the green building certification tools. Now the trends, um, as, as I see it, and uh, is that at some point you need to adopt a green building certification standard. That would be best to have buildings that were uh, certified by the same certifying agency. But more important in any benchmarking application would be to benchmark your carbon footprint, regardless of what the uh, green building certification trend looks like. In this slide, which I've taken directly from the FM, FM benchmarking uh, inputs, is a, is a calculation that we use to show the uh, carbon footprint calculation. We have, only have to input the annual quantities of gasoline, and natural gas, diesel fuel, and electricity consumed on the site. Of course, we have to input a carbon um, conversion factor, which is available from your utility company for the kilowatt hours you consume. 
but you're able to calculate uh, an equivalent carbon uh, footprint calculation for uh, your facilities directly from the FM benchmarking application. And we think that's very valuable. And you can actually benchmark uh, the pounds of carbon per square foot in the tool. Femi and I talked about how we could, we could um, include, uh, how add a little bit about how FM benchmarking supports cutting FM principles, cutting edge FM principles. In this case, um, uh, benchmarking will help you to identify the over and under performance associated with your work. By that I mean you, you should know uh, and, and you, you will know when you run an FM benchmarking application where you're overperforming and underperforming and it can help you apply the correct resources. You'll just by running through the benchmarking application you will understand how your work performance, how your work is getting done in a more complete way than ever before. Benchmarking helps you to do that. You can set building and job performance goals. And by that I mean uh, you, can, you can say, for example, that uh, I can see where I'm at on my kilowatt hours per square foot or my janitorial cost per square foot. Uh, and I'd like to improve that by 5% or 10% in the next year. And you can actually benchmark and trend that performance and see where, you, see where you'll be. And you can set those as, as, as goals for, for people that uh, work for you. You can negotiate more successfully with contractors and subcontractors, I should add, uh, by uh, having uh, up-to-date and accurate benchmarking information. You'll know if the prices you're receiving are valid and, um, or, or if you should ask for additional um, tenders or, or bids to uh, obtain uh, better pricing, all based on the benchmarking information you have. And you can justify to the owners your current or additional funding needs. If you're a service provider, you can justify it to your owner. If you're, uh, uh, if you're a facility manager working directly uh, for an organization, you can justify your current spend both to the uh, chief financial officer and up the organization. Well, I'm going to show you a couple of examples from a utilities benchmarking case study. In this case, we had uh, a fairly large facility, and we looked at, uh, they looked at their benchmarking um, performance, and uh, I believe they were in the second quartile, and decided they needed to um, improve and they looked at which applications from the best practices they could, they could uh, install or use at their facility. So they looked at uh, motion sensors in the general office space, ongoing recommissioning, and, uh, and then, uh, which just means that they checked out, um, uh, they, they set up a three-year cycle to validate that the building was operating per the original specs. They found a lot of ductwork that was disconnected some uh, circuits that have been, uh, things that have been turned on that were set to run continuously, timers that had been removed, things like that. So they checked out the ongoing, ongoing recommissioning, identified those issues, and then they implemented those recommendations. Well, they, they, the, the cost of that implement, implementation was uh, 94 million Naira, and their first year savings from that implementation was 38 kilowatt hours per square meter, pretty significant. Worked out to about 4.6 megawatt hours, or cost year of a first year cost savings of 57 million naira. Now that, that that resulted in a very simple payback of 20 months, well under any CFO's uh, chief financial officer's guidelines. Um, really an easy project to implement, and those savings continue to accrue throughout the organization forever. I'd like to use this next chart, which is uh, uh, from one of our benchmarking groups, and it shows, uh, it shows the first year savings, uh, energy savings of roughly uh, 8%. Uh, now, admittedly, this chart declines a little bit, and uh, after uh, three and four, years three and four, they've picked off the low-hanging fruit, is the conclusion you can reach from that. And it actually, but there's, but in, in, um, in the sixth and seventh year, uh, energy prices went up and they found more things that they could implement. 
So this is, uh, again, a, an example. Uh, through benchmarking, the group was able to identify what to do and how to achieve their cost savings. And in no year in these 10 years was there ever a, year, ever a time when the cost of benchmarking was greater than the cost of the savings they achieved. I'd like to point out and identify for you that benchmarking, FM benchmarking, is a continuous improvement process. It's a full cycle. Uh, we start our circle, our, our circle of improvement, with what to survey, which is, uh, I'll show you that uh, on, the coming up, on a slide coming up, uh, what to survey is really important. Um, the methodology to do that, which should be online and through the web and able to be at your disposal as needed. How we gather data, uh, we also want to um, be able to analyze and run our reports as needed, as many times as needed, until we're satisfied that the data we've input is correct. We want to focus on next on the best practices after we see what our performance looks like. We want to implement those ideas and, and, and then track that implementation through trends and ongoing benchmarking initiatives and repeat the process. And that, in, in its, at its fundamental basis, is a continuous improvement uh, process that uh, facility managers should follow. Our formula for benchmarking, for FM benchmarking, is compare, that is, get your data into the system, analyze it, see where you stand, see which best practices need to be implemented, and improve. Continue to attract your results. Well, if you look at the entire uh, scope of benchmarking options, it may look formidable, formidable. But my recommendation for Nigerian FMs is to focus what's on, on what's important. There are really four key areas. If you focus on maintenance, utilities, security, and janitorial, you'll cover between 95 and 97 percent of your operating costs at your facility. This is what's important and it really helps make the task a lot easier. The other things like paving and parking and grounds, well, you can benchmark those, but they represent such a small amount of your operating costs. You're really better off if you're starting the benchmarking process to focus on these four big items. For Nigerian FMs, I recommend that you begin benchmarking some of your portfolio. Start with 10 to 20 buildings. Benchmark enough that you can have a good sense of of how benchmarking is working for you. Input that critical data that I showed on the previous slides. Run your reports, that is, develop your analysis, see where you stand on the benchmarking charts, compare your data with your peer groups, and then identify the best practices that you can implement. By implementing those practices, you'll achieve savings. Track your results from year to year, share those results, and then trend your results, trend them year over year to see how your performance is improving. Thank you very much for allowing me to make this presentation to you. I hope you have a great conference. I wish you well. <laughs>